to continue our discussion on Facebook about center rotation. Let me simplify the concept somewhat. So now if the center rotation is positioned at the center resistance of the tooth, which is roughly here, if we consider that the bone is of normal architecture, we will get this kind of movement. So the crown is going in the right direction, the bite is closing, and the apex is moving in the opposite direction of where we want to go, which is not desirable. If we now consider a uncontrolled tipping where the center rotation moves towards the apex, we will obtain this kind of a movement, which again shows us that the overjet is being reduced but the bite is closing dramatically. If we move the center rotation even further, which is towards the apex, so the center rotation is now at the apex, again we'll see that the apex stays stationary, but the crown is moving distally, but the, the bite is again closing dramatically. And now I say, okay, let's move the center rotation at the bracket. Some people will claim it's a good idea. I'll show you what happens. This time the crown doesn't move much. There is less bite, there is no bite closing, but the apex is actually moving in the wrong direction. So how can we solve this issue? The best way to control the movement is to better understand what is needed and most probably looking at the center of rotation, how to calculate the center rotation. The first step is to find two points, let's say the incisal edges of the incisor and the apex of the central incisor and join them. Then we trace perpendiculars that bisect the lines that we have created. So this is now the center of rotation of one line and two lines, which is how this object, which is a tooth, is rotating around one point. Then we report this to the center resistance, which has been moving from here to here. Again, we join these two points and make a bisecting perpendicular to the center of rotation. So this is named the center rotation now. And if you look carefully, the center resistance number one, which is before movement and the center of resistance number two, which is after movement, will give you the line of action of the fourth, which is right here, and also the direction of the moment. At the moment, we do not know the moment to force ratio, which we'll cover in a different video of these two points. It should be around this area, so let's move it around the area that would make the most sense and the center rotation now let's try if we move the center rotation 90 degrees that's good 90 degrees that's good so let's see what happens if the center rotation is here well now we know that the center rotation of this movement to get a seamless displacement of the tooth has to be right here. So that's the instantaneous center of rotation of this situation where you want the tooth to actually tip back or tip back but rotate. You see the apex going up on a circle and the crown becoming in good relationship with the lower teeth. So the center rotation has to be here and from the center rotation you can deduct the correct for system that will give you the maximum efficiency for this movement. Thank you.